this. That could have been a very expensive mistake. This is a Canon lens, and I bought it for a Sony camera, but more than that, in a minute. This is the Sigma 150 to 600 mil lens, which is an absolute beast of a lens. Now, if you put this on something like a full frame camera, and this is a full frame camera, you're going to get the full 600 mil, but what happens if you put it on an APS-C camera like the Sony A6600? Well, that's got a crop factor of 1.4, which means this goes all the way from 210 to 840 mils, which means you can get way too close to lots of stuff. This lens has been around for a while, so it's been done to death, so I'm not going to bore you with all the details and the specs and get into the nitty gritty. What it has, though, has got a, a lock button, which locks the thing from moving around, depending on where you go. That didn't lock very well. Yeah, anyway, so... Now it's locked. It's got a lot of buttons. It's got like optical stabilization, which is really important. You've got two different settings on this and you've got an off, obviously as well, in case you don't want to use it, but at 600 mil, you want to use it. It's got autofocus modes. It's got a focus limiter, so you can limit the distance of the actual focus in the lens itself, which can be very useful depending on what you're shooting. And it's got a couple of custom buttons as well. Now, truth be told, I have been thinking about a zoom telephoto super long lens for a long time. You know what, I've, I've absolutely been a photography fan since I was a kid, and funnily enough, I was watching Dude Perfect, their bucket list in Africa, and some of the guys had these Sony super expensive lenses, and I'm like, oh, go on, this is a sign, like a YouTube video is a sign. I finally caved in, picked this up, and I bought it for a Sony camera, and it's a Canon lens. But again, as I said, more on how this actually works in a minute. The idea that a zoom lens, this never gets boring, does it? The idea that a zoom lens can bring you kind of into faraway places and a lot more intimate details, I know that sounds really dodgy and I swear that's not what it's for, but it can bring you to a place where you physically probably couldn't go, whether that's wildlife photography or sports photography, you couldn't be as close without something like a zoom lens. And for photography, this thing is a beast. But for video, what about for video see there's a problem with all of these lenses especially when they're all right that's boring now right yeah especially when you go to the full focal range of this which is 600 mil on an APS-C camera it's 840. the slightest movement is going to create a huge amount of judder and jitter in the lens even blinking an eyelash or a fart could really knock this off kilter so you do need something like a tripod to hold it anyway steady but again a gust of wind could cause some problems. So what is this really like for video? And that's one of the things that I wanted to get this for. By the way, I'm super, super excited to show you the following little bunch of clips, okay? I've shot some of these in the drone on the DJI Mini 2, but a lot of these, you're gonna be able to spot which ones are the drone and you're gonna be able to spot which ones were shot on just this. So you got a lot of video and for now I'm gonna shut up, okay? But right after this, I'm gonna explain how I got this Canon lens onto a Sony camera, but I'm super pumped for you guys to see this. Here we go.
What did you think guys? Let me know in the comments right now. Did you like that? What did you think of the footage? Man, I had such a blast just shooting the photographs and the video with the Sigma lens. It genuinely made me incredibly happy. And the other thing here as well is the sound design. All the music and especially the sound effects, all the waves and stuff, that stuff including the seagulls, none of that came from the drone obviously because DJI Mini 2 don't record sound but it didn't come from the Sony camera that I was using the A6600 because it was far too windy. Instead I got all of the sound effects and the music from Epidemic Sound who are the sponsors of this video. So if you want music and sound effects like that there's a link in the description for a free trial for you to grab your own music and sound effects and use them in your own videos. Big thanks to Epidemic Sound for an incredible platform. Anyway, the results from this and something like the Sony A6600 or any E-mount camera, oh man, like none of that stuff was possible with the drone. He couldn't get that close without risking the drone just being drowned, sunk, sank, anyway. But this thing brought me right into those surfers. And you know what? It genuinely made me happy to do it. It was just another way of expressing myself and a little bit of creativity. And here's the thing though. This, as I said, three times now, I think. Canon lens going onto a Sony camera. So how did that work? Well, this is what not only added to the cost of the actual lens, but this little yoke here, that's a very Irish word, yoke, this allowed me to get this on to an E-mount Sony camera. This is the Sigma MC11 lens adapter. Now, on one side, we have a Canon mount or Sigma, specifically Sigma lenses, but unofficially, apparently, it worked with all kinds of Canon glass. Don't know, though, but that's what they say on the internet. And then on the other side here, we have the actual E-mount. So this goes into this, we get it on, and that goes into the Sony. Something like this can cause problems, or can it? Because the lens is constantly talking to the camera. This isn't a native Sony lens. It's for Canon cameras, it's by Sigma, so it's not an official Sony lens, but will this adapter cause problems? Safe to say, no. It doesn't, surprisingly. Now, maybe it's in my head, but I think the autofocus is slightly slower than this normal native Sony camera lens. But the 600mm is really slow, but it does get there. Now, I think that's more to do with the actual focal length than the actual adapter. So maybe it's all in my head. Photo and video quality looks really, really good. I've asked you guys to leave a comment. You be the judge. I know it's YouTube and all of that, but if you're looking, at, even on the TV, I've looked at this on the TV, the stuff looks really, really good. Now, at the, obviously we wouldn't do it, yeah. At the top end here, the 600 mil or the 840 mil on an APS-C camera, it is, well, it's a little bit soft, but I think for the best part, the photo and the video quality out of this, the image quality as a whole, is absolutely amazing. There are though a few downsides to a lens like this. First off, this is big. This is big, it is heavy. Obviously it's not the kind of lens a kid could use. It is that heavy. Now, it does come with its own bag. It's a fine bag, it comes in the nice box, but yeah, this is, um, Another bag I don't want to bring because this is quite difficult to get into a normal camera bag if you want that mounted to your camera. It's probably not going to, it's going to be a real tight squeeze. Otherwise you're going to have to pull it apart. And there's not a lot of smaller backpack camera bags can take a lens like this. So that's another downside to the whole thing. And again, I come back to the weight. I upgraded the strap that I had, the Sony strap on the Sony A6600. I bought a Peak Design strap and it doesn't matter. It's this thing hanging around your neck. It's like a block hanging around your neck. Also, it's not the fastest lens in the world. We're talking 5 to 6.3 in the aperture, which means, well, with something like this, the general rule of thumb with a kind of big telephoto lens is that you've got to shoot double the actual size of the lens. In this case, it's 600 mil, so you're looking at at least 1 over 1,250th of a second when it comes to the shutter speed. So, yeah, you're not going to be getting lots of motion blur in this, depending on what you're doing. But... There is bokeh for days, again, depending on how far away you are. As a telephoto lens, this is really, really cheap in compared to some of the other stuff. Yes, the little adapter for putting into a Sony camera does add up to an extra couple of hundred bucks onto the whole thing. But let me tell you, for all in like, I don't know, 1500 bucks, whatever it was, 
This has made me incredibly happy. I'm not going to be shooting vlogs in this because it's just not going to work like that. But for video, for photography, just things that scratch that creative itch. This has brought a whole new lease of life for me. And I absolutely love this lens. So depending on what you're doing, you may never need this. But let me tell you, this thing has made me so happy. And you never know, it might make you happy too if you're like, oh, I just wanna, this for me is the one to go to rent it maybe check it out and see what you would think but i would really appreciate you guys hitting the like button to let me know you thought this video was good you got a kick out of the footage you got a kick out of this you might even get a kick out of that as well 